let's do some interactive debugging. We're going to now work on a stored procedure and I'm going to show you how to use some of the debugging techniques that we briefly discussed and troubleshoot a stored procedure. So let's go. Before we start debugging, there's one thing that's important to understand and that's whether you have the proper rights on your SQL login to actual debug. Debugging does require some elevated privileges and it's important that you have those privileges otherwise you will not be able to debug. It's easy to check. What you can do is go into security and then the logins then look for your login. Right click on properties and then go to server roles and make sure that you have the sysadmin login. If you do not have sysadmin as a server role, I, I said sysadmin login, I meant to say uh, sysadmin server role. If you do not have this server role, you will not be able to initiate a debugging session. So you'll need to work with your DBA if you aren't the DBA to get this role applied to your login. Once you do have this role, you'll be able to debug. And what I'm going to do now is show you how we can debug. I have a stored procedure set up that we'll use for debugging. So here's the stored procedure. It's one we were using before with our overview. It should look somewhat familiar. It's a stored procedure that goes and using a first and last name as input will search the sales order header, get that information, and then doing a subsequent search to get order tracking information and then based on that return the tracking information if found or if not message that the customer wasn't found. Now this query has a bug in it and when we run it it's going to bring back an unexpected result. So if you may have recalled that when we've ran this query in the past we are able to find information for Christina Garcia. But when I run this query now I will get my result I see that the customer is not found. You might scratch your head and go, well, that's interesting because I know that there's member seeing information on Christina Garcia. So what could be wrong? Well, let's run some debugging to find out. But the first thing I'm going to do to make this easier for me is I'm going to bring up the debugging toolbar. I could just use the menus here to start debugging. But instead, I'm going to bring up a toolbar that we can use and then use debugging commands right off our toolbar. And to do that, I will go to View, and then Toolbars, and then select Debug. And then notice now how I have this extra toolbar here, and it says Start Debugging, and there's other commands. So let's now start our debugging session. So now that I've started debugging, the database manager has stopped on the first line that it can execute. At this point, it's asking whether I want to execute the stored procedure. So we are going to step into the stored procedure. And now we are in the stored procedure and ready to execute the first line of code, which is the query. So let's do another step into to run the query. So we've ran the query and we're going to look at row count. Row count, remember, brings back how many rows were returned from the last query. Since we did select top one, it would stand that our query is going to bring back one row and indeed row count is one. Here we have if row count is less than zero, we're going to run a query, otherwise customer not found. So let's do another step into and we get our tracking information that customer not found. Now you may go, wait a minute, that seems very strange because if we're finding a row, shouldn't we be running this query here? And that's exactly right. We really should be running that query. So we have a bug in our program logic. Instead of testing for at row count being less than zero, should have been testing for row count being greater than zero. We wanted to run the query if we found rows, not if we did not find rows. That was a silly mistake on my part. So we're going to fix that. So let's just continue the program on and then we'll go back and fix our error. 
So what I can do now is go back to my stored procedure and fix it. Make it row count greater than zero. I'm going to execute this because I need to alter this procedure to save it. And now I can come here and run it. And you can see when I run it, now I get tracking information because it's actually working as it should. So let's run debugging again because I want to show a couple of other things. So now we're going to step into the program. And at this point, I'm going to set a breakpoint right here. And what this says is whenever we execute within the debugger and we come across this line that's red, immediately stop. I can hit continue, and if it comes across this line, it will stop execution. So I hit continue, and then boom. It came down, it ran the if statement, came to the um, breakpoint that was in red, and it stopped. And the reason I wanted to stop here is so that we can look at a couple of other aspects of the screen. One thing that's really cool I wanted to show you is this thing called locals. And here you can see all the variables and parameters that we've set up. This is really cool. So you can see the first and last name that came in as um, the parameter values. You can see the tracking information. This hasn't been given a value yet. That's going to happen next when we actually uh, run this select statement. And you can see that we have a sales order ID that was assigned in that first query. So I'm going to step into this query here, and you're going to see that tracking information down here will actually receive a value. So let's run the step into. And now you can see that the locals has um, tracking information of a value. Hopefully you can see now with debugging that, just from the quick glimpse I've given you here, that it gives you some really good ways to see and understand what is occurring within your procedure and becomes a very um, easy and quick way to troubleshoot your code. And we'll use debugging more and more as we continue on. So this isn't just like a one shot deal. I just wanted to introduce this. And as we go into the different programming concepts, I'll start sprinkling debugging into our uh, lessons so that you can see it becomes kind of a habit because it's definitely some a tool that you want to use in your toolkit. All right, see you in the next lesson.